we define a min term as follows. A point or a corner in the n-dimensional Boolean space is called a vertex. This is a cube with only zeros and ones. And a min term is a cube function of a vertex. And this will correspond to one one in the function. So the min term of this vertex v is denoted as m sub v, which is the cube function consisting of the lattice exponent x1 v1 and x2 v2 up to xn vn. And since this is a vertex in our Boolean space, it means that these v1, v2 and up to vn will always be either 0 or 1. They will never be the empty set and they will never be the set that we denoted b. And the fact that they are only 0 or 1 makes them a corner in our n-dimensional Boolean space. So a min term is an AND product of all the variables that we have, either with or without a prime. So again, let's look at an example. And we're going to use the same example as we have seen before, where f is a Boolean function in the three-dimensional vector space taking either 0, 1 or don't care as an output. Since we want to find the min terms here, we're going to look at the ones because these will correspond to vertices in our Boolean space. So we have the onset, which we define as f inverse of 1 which equals 0, 2, 3, and 7. So each of these will correspond to a vertex that is a 1 in our Boolean space. So each of these will also correspond to a min term. So let us start looking at the first min term that we're going to denote m0. This will equal x1, 0, x2, 0, and x3, 0, which we can also write as x1 prime, x2 prime, x3 prime. Our next min term is m2, which is x1, 0, x2, 1, and x3, 0, which we can also write as x1 prime, x2, x3 prime. The next one is m3, which we can write as x1, 0, x2, 1, x3, 1, which equals x1 prime, x2, x3. And our last min term we call m7, and we can write this as x1, 1, x2, 1, x3, 1, which also equals x1, x2, x3. So all these are our min terms of the function, and these are all written as an AND product of terms that are either x i or x i prime and for all of these min terms we always have all of the different variables that we have so we always have x1 x2 and x3 and this will lead us to the disjunctive normal form a normal form of a function is a standardized way of writing the function such that we always write it uniquely in this specific form and disjunctive normal form is one way to write the function uniquely. This disjunctive normal form we're going to abbreviate as the DNF. And we can say that all Boolean functions can be written on this disjunctive normal form. And this form is given by the OR sum of all our min terms. The max term is the dual of a min term. And we're going to denote a max term by the capital M and this V corresponding to a vertex. 
And this is the inverse cube function of a vertex or the complement of a vertex, where this vertex will correspond to a zero in the function. And using De Morgan law, we can see that the complement of this min term will be written as an or sum of terms. So it will consist of x1 and v1 prime or x2 v2 prime and so on up to xn vn prime. So note here if we compare this max term to the min term, the min term will describe a 1 in the function truth table while a max term will des describe a 0 in the function truth table. And the max term we can derive by taking the min term of a zero in the truth table and then just complement it. And as we saw before, we use here the De Morgan law in order to make it into the form that a max term should have. And again, let us look at this function in order to try to find our max terms. And for the max terms, we are looking at vertices corresponding to zeros in our Boolean function, which means that we are looking at our offset in this case. This is given by f inverse of zero, which is, if we use the same notation as we had before, we give this as one and four. So this is our one and this is our four. Our first max term we denote as m1. This will be equal to our cube function with 0, 0, 1 in the Boolean space that we call x here, which consists of x1, x2 and x3. And since it is a max function, we are looking at the inverse of this or the complement of this. And this cube function is given by x1 prime, x2 prime, x3. And then we take the complement of this, we use the Morgan's law, which gives us x1 or x2 or x3 prime. So here we have two max terms. So m4 is this max term, m1 is this max term. And similar to the min terms, they will consist of all the variables that we have, and the variables will be either xi or they will be xi prime. And here for the max terms, they will be separated by the OR. And this will lead us to another normal form, which we're going to call the conjunctive normal form, or abbreviated as CNF. So all the Boolean functions can be written on CNF. And the CNF is given by the AND product of all our max terms that corresponds to the offset of the function. And the offset is the set of inputs that has the output zero. So if we now summarize this function, what we have is a set of min terms that we denoted m0, m2, m3 and m7. And the min terms were these terms that we have here. So if we now want to write this on our disjunctive normal form, this will be written as the OR sum of our min terms. So this will be equal m0 or m2 or m3 or m7, which equals our min terms x1 prime x2 prime, x3 prime, or x1 prime, x2, x3 prime, or x1 prime, x2, x3, or x1, x2, x3. And we also had a set of max terms which we denoted by capital M, M1 and M4 in this case. And we had one max term here and we have one max term here. So if we want to write this in our CNF form, 
this is now written as an AND product of our max terms. So this will be M1 and M4, which we can write as X1 or X2 or X3 prime times X1 prime or X2 or X3. So what we have here is the same function, both written in the disjunctive normal form and in the conjunctive normal form.